We were talking about translating your home inspection report, uh, report into repair requests. What exactly do you mean by that? Okay, well, let's, let's start with the home inspection report and its purpose, okay? Mm-hmm. My job when I do a home inspection, or any home inspector's job should be for that matter, is to compile all the information we can about the house and give that to the potential buyer or seller if we're doing a pre-list inspection so they have all the information about the house. Absolutely. What it is not is a repair list. It's not a repair list. People misinterpret when I tell you something's broken or when I tell you something needs to be repaired soon that it's a repair list. And what I've been seeing lately and what I've been hearing lately when people reach back out to me sometimes about the repair requests that get submitted, which is kind of outside of my lane, is, oh, my God, they asked for 45 things. I'm like, wow, 45 things, a house, I don't remember the house being that bad. It's and nuts. some people will show me the repair request, and they'll literally ask for every single thing in the report back to the seller. Yeah. And, the, you know, we're seeing a lot of younger real estate agents, which is fine, but they're not educated when it comes to what to ask for or or how to say to their potential customer, listen, this is a used house. It's yep. not a brand new house. You're going to buy a house with some defects. That's okay. Yep. And on the other end of things, you're seeing list agents that, again, are younger or newer or don't have the experience to go back to a repair request and be like, listen, we're not fixing all this stuff. We didn't price this house like it's the Taj Mahal. <laughs> this is a three-bedroom Cape and Edgewood, which is fine. But you gotta you gotta be realistic with what you're expecting a customer to fix on this house at this price point. And and deals are blowing up because people are just aren't educated. I was just at a house the other day, and this was a um, perfect example. Um, Self tapping saddle valve. So for you see, for you online that don't know, or you listening uh, to the to the show live that don't know what that is, that's that little DIY attachment where you you uh, you tap into a cold water line to run that little water line to your refrigerator. Yep. For the ice maker or whatnot. Well, technically, those are not code compliant. Hmm. Is it the end of the world if one of those is in a house? No, because everybody puts them in there. But I do have to do my job, and if we identify one uh, that's present, we just have to inform them, hey, that's not code compliant. Those kind of have a high failure rate. You might consider a better uh, you know, a better uh, joint there or a better, a better transition in the plumbing. Sure. And you got people asking for this kind of stuff, and you know, it, what happens is you end up with a, a huge list of, uh, of things, and the deal just falls apart because hmm. – the, the, this guy is selling a house. He doesn't have millions of dollars. He just wants to sell the house and be fair about it, you know. So that kind of stuff doesn't necessarily need to be fixed if it's not leaking. Exactly. Similarly, um, folks don't review the disclosure, which is which kills me. Um, I mean, it doesn't kill me. It kills you guys more than me. <laughs> but we, uh, you know, we'll go to a to a home inspection and we'll tell somebody, hey, you know what, this roof it's probably about 22 years old. Uh, you know, you probably got maybe three, four years left on it. You're going to have to do a new roof soon. Yep. And then uh, you come back, and this, the seller will be like, hey, man, uh, you told him the roof was failing. I'm like, well, I told uh. him it was older. And, you know, he's like, well, we disclosed that the roof was original and the house is 22 years old. Exactly. Like, ah. So somebody failed that negotiation there because exactly. the people buying the house knew that the roof was old when they made their offer. And it's not really cool to go back and ask for something that was negotiated in effect with the first offer because it was part of the disclosure.